Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the 8th chapter, verses 31 through 38. And I invite you to follow along in the Pew Bible or follow along on the screen. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will, be sa will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of then the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have to tell you that I had a completely different sermon planned for this morning. But as my week progressed, I realized what I had planned to say and what I'd planned to preach was not the scripture, was not the word of God that we needed to hear this particular morning. I shared with someone earlier this week that only does it not only feels like there is disease in the water in our community, there is dis-ease within our community. There is a sense of uneasiness. There is a sense of something not being quite right. There is a seems to be like we as a whole, as humankind, are so far removed from the healing and wholeness promised to us by the beloved community, the removal that is our choice and our actions, that we are doing everything that we can to separate us from that healing and wholeness that is promised to us. That, that separation is almost our mode of operation. I jokingly told someone that it must be a full moon going on around here, and that's bringing this sense of dis-ease to everything and everyone. Yet as the week progressed, I realized how pervasive this sense of dis-ease truly is. From my daughter being called the N-word on school on Tuesday, to the death of a young binary student attacked in their bathroom, this dis-ease is not only being felt in our own lives, it is infiltrating every part of our culture and society. With this disease and disease happening in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world, as I sat down to write this sermon, I wondered how in the world am I going to stand up here and bring the good news in light of all that? And then I realized it was in the asking of the question that I found my answer, that I found our answer as the people of God. What I mean by this is as we look at our text as disciples of Christ, we are being extended an invitation, an invitation to participate in the building up of the community of God here on earth, an invitation to take up our cross and follow Jesus. This invitation is a reminder that our faith as Jesus' disciples, it's not a lifestyle choice. It's not a passing phase. It is who we are. It is whose we are. It is something that shapes every fiber of our being. It shapes our words. It shapes our actions. It shapes our relationships. It shapes how we view the world. It shapes how we interact with each other as beloved children of God. It centers us in the light and love of God. And we look for that light and love of God in each and every one. 
This invitation to take up our cross and follow Jesus is pretty clear because it grounds our calling as his disciples in the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus who came to bring life, giving healing and wholeness, not just to a select few, but for all of God's people. This invitation to take up our cross and follow Jesus grounds us in the understanding that by taking up our cross, by following Jesus, we will come into direct opposition with the powers that be of this world. We will come into direct oppositions with the systems that prefer and will do anything to maintain that status quo. The invitation to take up our cross and follow Jesus grounds our calling in the recognition that Jesus' mission was not to die, but his faithfulness to God's healing mission eventually would lead to his death. I'm going to say that again. Jesus' mission was not to come and die. He died because he was so committed, so faithful in bringing healing and wholeness to this world that the powers that be back then and the powers that be now will do anything and everything to prevent and maintain the status quo. The powers that be back then and now recognize and still recognize that what made Jesus's ministry and mission so powerful, so life-changing, so life-transforming, and in so threatening to them is that it did not and it would not abide anything, any impediment in getting in the way to the immediate restoration of the broken and the outcast. Jesus's mission and ministry was gathering in and welcoming all, recognizing each and every one as the beloved children of God. Now, please hear me say, as modern day disciples, I'm not expecting each and every one of us to take up our cross and be martyred for our faith. Yes, I know that is happening in other parts of the world, but for us here in Midway, Kentucky, in the year 2024, in the U.S., we as disciples of Christ are facing a different challenge. We are facing having the strength and the courage to let go of our expectations of safety and acceptance in order to stand up for the gospel message of love and grace. Our challenge is standing up and speaking up. Our challenge is using our privilege and our resources, our networking, if you will, to become instruments of God's justice, instruments of God's grace, instruments of God's peace, instruments of God's love for all of God's people. And yes, I know this challenge is uncomfortable. And I yes, I know this challenge is difficult. And yes, I know the excuses we can offer. Believe me, I gave every single one when I got the call to ministry. And you see where I'm standing right now. Yet, we know as people of faith, there is grace for us when we take up the cross. You see, too often we equate of taking up our crosses with becoming Jesus. Not becoming like Jesus, but becoming actual Jesus. And let us we'll stop right there. That's not what Jesus is asking. And that's not what Mark is saying when he put down these words 2,000 years ago. One of the joys of our faith is God is God and we are not. And we give thanks for that gift each and every day. In our text, Jesus does not say, take up my cross. Jesus does not say, take up the cross. Jesus says, take up your cross cross and follow me. Take up our cross as a community of faith and follow him. Jesus is telling his disciples, telling us to take up the work of building up the beloved community here on earth for all of God's people, for all of God's creation, that it's not enough for us to display our gilded crosses around our necks or in our sanctuaries. 
We are called to take up the cross and change the narrative. Change the narrative from me and mine and embrace the narrative of we and ours. That I am not made whole until we are all made whole. I am not free until we are all free. I am not truly embraced as a beloved child of God until we are all embraced as a beloved child of God. What Jesus is telling his disciples, telling us that as his followers, as ones who've experienced the love and grace of God, as ones who know how the story ends, as ones whose life has been transformed and changed by the hope of the resurrection, we are called to follow a different path. We are called to be in community, to be in relationship with those on the margins, with those that this world would rather ignore or kill. We are called to take up our cross and follow Jesus. We are called to stand up, to speak up, to be the heart and hands of God in this world, bringing healing and wholeness for all of God's people. We are called to take up our crosses, to take up the causes of justice and mercy, of grace, of connection and hope and love each and every single day. We're called to make that choice to be the heart and hands of God in every single moment we face in every difficult challenge each and every day. We are called to live our lives in such a way to share the gospel in such a way that the powers of disease, the power of disease are destroyed. Jesus' followers, we're called to be up for something good in this world. Or in the words of my new favorite modern theologian and preacher, Cole Arthur Riley, when we as followers of Jesus take up our crosses, we refuse to bow down to the status quo. Others may have cho chosen to limit their imaginations for liberation, but we will not. We have the vision of God's beloved community guiding us and leading us. We have this vision of God's shalom coming to fruition here on earth. And this vision of healing, this vision of wholeness shows us time and time again that there are systems, there are powers which have and continue to gain everything from our complacency, from our lack of taking up the cross and following Jesus. What Jesus is telling his disciples, which Jesus is telling us today, is sometimes the best way we can resist the narrative of power and might and reframe the narrative to one of grace and love is to speak up, to stand up, and to say, this is not right. May it be so. Amen.